Hello, not here. Oh, welcome back to Path of Exile. We are about to enter the mines, but before we enter, I want to highlight a very nice flask I discovered and traded for, and that is the Sorrow of the Divine. It's a silver flask, so it creates a consecrated ground when you use it. And the consecrated ground will last for about five seconds. And it will regenerate 4% of your life every second. So it's a way to regenerate your life. It also increases your damage by 40%. But the interesting thing is that it will grant you a zealot's oath during, your f during the flask effect, which is nearly 6 seconds. And those who have played with energy shield builds before will remember zealot's oath applies your life regeneration to your energy shield instead of to your life. The thing is, as a shadow, Zealot's Oath is quite far away. You can make builds that path towards it and use it, but it's going to cost you about you know, 7 to 10 travel nodes just to get Zealot's Oath. And that is a, a lot of energy shield or damage or other things that you will have to sacrifice for it. So I was looking at other ways to obtain it, and there, there's a, a unique body armor that gives you Zealot's Oath. But it's a Templar armor, so it has some armor on it. But I discovered that the Sorrow of the Divine also grants you a Zealot's Oath. So it's a flask that when you pop it, you will actually regenerate your energy shield rather than your life. So it's almost like an energy shield replenishing potion. And it is glorious. It's not stupidly powerful, but it is very nice to use anyway. So currently with the Stone Golem out, we regenerate... 70 life per second. Swallowed and if you pop the silver flask, to be it a we regenerate about 85 energy shields per second. And that is, well, our energy shield is half of our life. So the more energy shields we get, the better it's going to be. And the thing is, most of the time you're fighting inside of your energy shield. And that's really where you want to stay. And eventually, um, we will have more energy shields than life. That is the end goal of this build. So, having this flask on the build and just getting used to it already is pretty cool. See, you can just uh, hit the flask to start regenerating your energy shield. And, no, it uh, trades for a chaos or less, uh, currently. This is not a perfect one. The perfect one has an in uh, up to 50% increased duration. But, no... Mid 40s, it's it's one chaos. That's something that's very affordable for trading right now. So, yeah, that that's yet another interesting for the uh, interesting thing for this build. A flask that regenerates your energy shield. So uh, we are looking for the shreds. Oh, also, let's not uh, stay in melee here. On the other hand, we have a flask that helps us regenerate our energy shield. Look at that, we get hit and we regenerate it anyway. Found horn, 20%, we also, we also have a 20%. And there's Katarina ahead, nice, I was actually looking for her. So I don't think she's child. in town yet. I'm gathering a little necrotic sustenance. Could do with okay, bring a corrupted thing to the statue okay we can do that look for statue i don't remember encountering the statue on the way here so that means it's going to be somewhere further ahead which is cool also it might be in one of the side areas over here so let's check there this is not a side area it's just a dead end same here no this actually leads on Oh, we can do without. Uh, there is a path down here. Very easy to overlook. Hello there, cave eyes. So, you gain the most benefit out of the sorrow of the divine, of course, if you stand inside of the of the area of the the consecrated ground. What I noticed is that this is less of a hit and run build and is more of a stand and cast build. 
So having a flask to pop while you are actually casting and trying to murder the enemy, it is pretty useful. And I boosted clarity once again, didn't I? Uh, yeah. At some point I should stop automatically increasing the level of clarity every time it pops up. Because my mana is getting consumed like crazy here. It's 141 out of 491, so that's still a third. On the other hand, I still have enough mana and I can chain cast and it doesn't really run out. So Just need a moment to catch it's not like I breath. create problems this way, but at some point you have reserved enough. So the golem because it just charges ahead and it taunts things. It is actually pretty darn good at just keeping things in place. Also, I used to have an undead minion. Where the heck did it go? Here, come on, stay with the group, please. Uh, slow zombie is being slow. Getting the feeling this is leading towards the exit. Yeah, feeling is right. So, let me guess. Katarina was just standing very near to the statue we have to deliver the zombie to. Often goes like that. Okay, let's wait a little bit for the zombie. Yes, yes. Oh, not actually. Did I overlook it earlier on then? Kind of have to. Oh, in my defense, there are spaces I haven't explored yet. Come on, zombie. Get over here. Stay with the group. Uh, this is the most frustrating part of the masters. That they pop after the fact. So did I completely walk by it? Okay, it was off to the side. That, that's my excuse and I'm gonna stick with it. Okay, rotting mummy. You're just really gonna die. Thank you. Let's chat with Katharina again. And there you are. Most excellent. Level 2. That means I can now put your crafting station in my hideout and improve the wands. So as a caster, I imagine Katarina is going to be an important master to gain reputation with. Someone or something is keeping very busy in the bowels of this mountain. Ooh, that was a nice catch. So the stone golem's life regen will also get converted into energy shield uh, regen, of course, with the, with the new flask. So that is useful. And pretty good. Okay, then we move on. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Ooh, silken. That's nice. Vortexes, but just barely missing them. Okay. Ah, Vortex is doing reasonable damage. It's damage over time, it's. Oh, the DPS from Frostbolt and Vortex, it's still. 
compares a bit weirdly if you count for chain casting and things like that. But that might also be because, yeah, well, my expectation was still that frost, uh, that Vortex was going to be the real money maker here, rather than Vortex in terms of damage output. And so far it is the opposite. On the other hand, you can combine them. So that's maybe also why the damage of Vortex is a bit lower. Because you, know, you pierce and then you pop it. And especially once you got increased AoE, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty large explosion. It's always comforting to witness an honest, permanent death. Uh, yo. Boom, boom. So you just keep exploding them. And it works out pretty damn well. Uh, the fact that you got three sips of this um, whenever it's full does mean that you can just use your flask mostly at will. It's not like uh, like a, a granite flask that you, uh, at least I when I have one, I always feel like I have to save it up for like unique boss fights because you only get one sip and uh, after that you have to do more recharging. Or maybe it's two sips, but it always feels like you don't have enough sips. But with this flask you got three sips, so I hope that's enough to keep it up for 15 seconds. In which time you can kill quite a lot of things and generate quite a bunch of new flask charges. I do charges. hope these constipated bowels don't find their release while I'm still inside them. <laughs> Yo, stop summoning chaos golems, please. We're using energy shields here. We don't want Just chaos damage. Just need to catch Just my Um, stop summoning, yes, or digging, or whatever you would call it. Ah, one of them did manage to get a Chaos Sentinel out of the wall. And another one. Well, the nice thing of what I'm doing here is that, of course, I still have 70 life regenerated per second. So even if I'm taking Chaos damage, it doesn't really matter. I regenerate my life as well as my energy shield. Because I can more or less just flip it at will. really don't understand why this was only one chaos and there's actually plenty for sale maybe it's because there's not a lot of people using it or because it's common enough and I've just been very unlucky with my drops that's possible but as I'm starting to use the trade system more um, no you can get more interesting build ideas and especially once you start playing a build you can refine it using uh, traded items and oh, because i play self found uh, in the leagues i can't use the very expensive items anyway because i never have the currency so and as a result i think it's no, the builds I play, even though no, if some of the, the uniques might really enhance the build. No, like a series foible, if you take this one off, a mana regen would be pretty rubbish right now. Um, but with it, no, the build is very, very viable early on. And this is also just something that just enhances the core build. So I think that it still fits in the in the theme of builds you could play, well, self-found if you're lucky enough to find the items. But otherwise, 
the builds are still very attainable for a solo player. Maybe then that's a better way to look at it. Well, if you've got a, a large network of uh, active friends that play the game a lot and that you team up with, you know, then getting uh, access to currency is easier because you can do map runs together, you can uh, boost each other, you can share each other's um, daily master quests and things like that. So there's a really a big uh, magnifying factor in terms of just opportunities you have to get a more currency. But I still still think that as a you know, as a mostly solo player, this game is very very playable, and a lot of uniques are actually very attainable. Now the once they start requiring more than mm -hmm. level fifty, things become expensive. That that's I'm not arguing with that. But the, the lower level things or you no know, flasks like this, they can really uh, enhance the experience. And there is another skill point. So we're gonna increase our energy shield even further. And let's empty our pockets. So we got, we got a good 10 minutes remaining. Has ascended. So we might as well get started. Let's see, this is 1 to 49 lightning to spells. That's a pretty interesting modifier. Uh, Imp dagger, plus 1 to socket fire gems. Ah. It's okay. Ooh, we got 5 of these coins already. Might as well pick up a bunch of new prophecies. And just sort this out later. So, welcome. Let's seek more prophecies. The plague more watches you with a glistening grin, waiting for a moment to send his shadows. You will be ambushed by the plague most followers after you kill a certain very powerful monster. The interesting thing is that it says a certain very powerful monster. So, which one is it going to be then? A merchant seeks to trade misfitting gifts. Five for one. But what is the one? You will trade five unique items with a vendor. Oof. I don't have five uniques yet. The ancient rare champion has fallen. But a killing blow reveals his final sacrifice beneath the morning sun. You will slay a powerful Val Fallen. Who will drop... A sacrifice at dawn fragment. Okay. They run, they bite, they flee, they die. Swarms of fur and teeth and tail drown each and every room. So we got the flooded with rats prophecy on top. So let's make let's make a start on getting to camps. We'll probably just go for the next waypoint. In the next episode, we'll actually fight Calm and Dereso and maybe do a little bit of preparations for the Izaro trials by going through the hedge maze and things like that. But for now, let's get to the next waypoint. Um, three levels over level, that's still pretty good. So far so good. Now, there's always a couple of interesting encounters here. You got the unique totem pack, that's always interesting. Triskiriaki of course is always very very interesting. Very curious to see how those encounters are going to handle with this build. Because, well, this is my very first caster build since 
Well, since the Ascendancy expansion, really. I've been playing melee builds of some sort since Ascendancy. As such, when we do the Izaro trial before we go for Malakai, that is also going to be very interesting. Doing the Labyrinth as a caster. So during the 2.2 patch, there were some, some issues, uh, at least uh, there was some uh, community concern that energy shield builds and hybrid builds were unfairly punished in the trial. Uh, specifically that trap damage was absurdly high because it uh, calculated the maximum energy shield. Even in situations where, for example, you had your energy shield protecting your mana. And no, those builds were unfairly punished for by trap damage, and as such, the the labyrinth was unfairly difficult. I ended up playing just mostly uh, life-based melee builds, and as such, of course, I did not really have an issue. Let's see, let's actually curse those things. No, can't. Actually, getting a lot of flag here. Also, my golem got killed. That really does not help. Also, we get add-ons. Let's take them out. So here, I'm just hey, I'm dying. Shade, you don't belong here. The play more watches you with a ghostly ah. grin, waiting for a moment to send his shadow. So. That makes sense why this was more difficult. We had the saplings and as well as that we had the uh, the plague maw sending out his minions. But we defeated him. Okay, I'll just uh, go like that. So it's very interesting the zealots over here because you never you never lose anything no your life regen goes off but your energy shield regen goes on and it's actually more powerful at least in in my case here and it will only get more powerful and then once the zealots over fades your life starts regenerating again and if you get hit by a lot of chaos damage in the meantime you can always hit a life flask to actually regenerate your life again and the upside is, while you are under the effect of the flask, you also deal more damage. And more damage is always good. Just need a moment to catch my breath. So. Ah, it's still nice to just run after your frostbobs and just watch enemies take a lot of damage just from casual orbs that are still just flying about never really aimed at them but hitting them or killing them nonetheless yo have some orbs So one of my assumptions that this build would play similar to the oh we get duplicate totems I think that's uh that's a uh, yes that's the twins prophecy so one of my assumptions that it was that this build would play similar or roughly similar to how my chaos caster played uh, an essence drain contagion caster that Assumption is also completely false. This is a very different build. Just due to the fact that you can actually chain cast your frost orbs. Or frost bolts. I keep calling them frost orbs because well they're more big orbs than small bolts. But that as an aside. But your gameplay mechanics are different. Uh, Contagion Essence Strain, it you know you spread contagion you shoot in one essence drain and it just spreads like wildfire and after that you can just run about um, 
But here you are mostly just standing in place and casting. So it's not a hit and run build as I was expecting. It's more like hitting, 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 and there's not a lot of running. Let's see, skeletons identified streams and ignite me. Do I have a burning fix? I have got a burning fix. So that's okay. Boom, 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 boom. Well, of course it's streams monsters. So I have to stand here and cast for a while. You die. Please. Yeah, thank you. Let's keep going. Let's keep looking. I'm pleasantly surprised so far that that's basically what I'm continuously trying to say and the further I get the more I play the more I discover the more I like the the skills and their interactions and just how it all comes together well, some skills they really just they're not fun to play or they get less interesting the further you get because no they there's no new interactions, there's no there's nothing interesting about them. But hmm, so far it's been it's been good. And of course it's been a good opportunity to get the force bomb out, because that's also of course a new ascendancy skill that I haven't had a, a really good opportunity to play with yet. Let's see, so we have this one. Um there are some damage over time nodes that we want eventually want to get, but for now I'm going to focus more on defense. So I want to get to the energy shield chain over here. Hello there, relic killer. Did I already kill you, or are you a chain a twin as well? Ghost. Fun, fun, fun. Oof. They do quite a bit of damage. Spirit and Infernal Blow. So, dealing with ghosts. Teleport on top and then cast Vortex because it's an instant hit. And that staff is too large to carry about. So I'm not gonna. So we should be getting near to Triskiriaki. Question is, how is he gonna spawn? It's okay, so he doesn't have the level downstairs. So that means he's probably gonna be upstairs on the plateau. But it does give us a bit more uh, maneuvering space. So it's to our advantage here. So let's just get all the add ons away. So, stop trying to murder me. Really? Do I look like a monster to you? No, I don't. So stop trying to. Not here yet. Okay. Next plateau then. Let's see. Berserker and Berserker. So that what was the was final one twin. Is now two. The strong find greatest strength. Okay. So he hurts like hell, as always.
Oh, aha, army. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Okay, just popping m multiple vortices on his head. I think that did the trick. But it does uh, provide for a uh, important reminder. I might have close to 2000 effective life. It, still not immortal. I'm very much a offensive powerhouse, not a defensive powerhouse. Also, physical damage is going to be my main weakness, of course. Because I don't have any armor. And that's going to be the final staircase, I think. Yeah, I already see the gate on the minimap. Come on, yes. Okay. And there is the white point I was going for. So, this was a uh, pretty good run. We did the mines and we did half of the walk towards Calm. So next episode, we are gonna go for Calm, we're gonna go for Deresso, and then we're gonna do the Hedge Maze, which might also contain some prophecies. I don't know, we're gonna pick up more prophecies before we start out so thank you for watching and i'll see you again next time bye bye